In our previous lesson, we saw that solids consist of small atoms that are vibrating. Now, what about gases? We have a helium-filled balloon in our lab. Certainly, you've seen balloons like it at birthday parties. Let's look inside. Ready to dive? We have to zoom in a billion times to see the individual atoms. You can see that helium gas is made of small helium atoms. But these atoms are much further apart than the ones we saw in a diamond. In real life, the atoms don't stay still. Remember, in solids, they vibrate. Let's switch time on and see what happens in a gas. Ready, steady, go. They're flying. This gas is at normal room temperature. But what will happen if we increase the temperature? Let's heat the gas to 1000 kelvins. You see our atoms are flying much faster. Actually, such random atom movement is what we call temperature. The faster atoms fly or vibrate, the higher the temperature will be. Take a few moments and fly around inside. You're now as small as an atom. The next time you're at a birthday party and you see a helium balloon, you can tell your friends that you flew inside the same kind of balloon and saw these tiny atoms. Remember that, in the previous lesson, you saw that in solids, the atoms are close together. However, in gases, there is plenty of space between atoms. That's why gases are much lighter than solids. There are far fewer atoms in the same volume. Try to estimate how many more atoms of a solid are in the same space as compared to this gas. There are about a thousand times more atoms in the same space in solids compared to gases. That's why gases are, on average, about a thousand times lighter than solids. Let's go back to our laboratory. Now we have a trick question for you. Are there things that do not consist of atoms? Not everything consists of atoms. Light, for example, consists of photons, which are different kinds of particles with different properties. In the previous lessons, we have seen that all matter is built out of small atoms. But what are atoms themselves? What's inside them? We will start with our helium balloon. Let's look inside. Ready to dive? We have to zoom in a billion times to see the individual helium atoms. Let's choose one of those atoms and get closer. You see that this atom consists of an atomic nucleus surrounded by an electron cloud. This is how atoms are made. The nucleus is positively charged and electrons are negatively charged, so they attract each other. The real nucleus size is much smaller than you see here. Let's show its real size. It is now smaller than one pixel on your screen. It is about 100,000 times smaller than the size of an atom. Nevertheless, almost all of the atom's mass, over 99.9% .9 of it, is found in the nucleus. Let's zoom in to get a good look at this nucleus. Now you can see that the nucleus consists of protons and neutrons, tightly bound to each other. The protons are positively charged, so they actually attract electrons. The neutrons are not charged at all. Let's go back to our atom. Later, we will show the nucleus blown up, just to make it easier to see. Remember that an actual nucleus is much, much smaller. Now we will look at another atom. Now. Let's get closer to the atomic nucleus again. Protons are positively charged. You can see a small plus sign on them. A neutron has zero charge. Protons and neutrons are almost of equal mass and both are more than a thousand times heavier than an electron. Let's go back to our laboratory. Which of these particles attracts a proton? A negatively charged electron will attract a positively charged proton. 
Which of these particles will be repelled by a proton? Same charged particles will repel one another, so two positively charged protons will repel each other. 